Hi, I'm back making another video, this time how to set a bunch of different preferences in your Zoom account. So this is not mission critical stuff for teaching. This is if you have a little extra time or you're just kind of poking around and you're trying to make this as tailored an experience as you want for your own use of Zoom. This is not vital information for how to convey your curriculum to your students. So we're working on other videos about that. This one is kind of like an optional, if you have extra time, if you wanna muck around with some of the stuff, I'm gonna show you what the different uh, preference settings do. Okay, so I'm gonna go up to the top left-hand corner of my screen, click on zoom.us, scroll down a tiny bit, click on preferences, open that window, move this over. And I'm just gonna like step you through all these different tabs for the settings. So. General settings, um, you can read through these. Obviously, anything that applies to you, you might want to enable. So I don't have dual monitors at home. I'm gonna mostly be doing this teaching in the spring from my laptop. Um, it would be nice if I could set it up so that I could have my lecture on one side or my slides on one side and the Zoom room on the other. So if you have dual monitors, that might be cool. Um, enter full screen when you start a meeting, that can be really annoying. Sometimes you wanna like wrap up other stuff that you're finishing up when you're entering your Zoom room or starting your class, like your email or something. So you may not wanna have it automatically put you into full screen. Um, one thing that I think is handy is this here, copying the invite URL once the meeting starts. So it's automatically waiting for you on your clipboard in case people inevitably are like texting you or emailing you to let you know they couldn't find the link or it wasn't working for them. You can just have that ready to go. Um, or have your TAs have that ready to go so they can send it to students who for some reason can't figure out where the class is meeting. Uh, ask me to confirm when I leave a meeting that's helpful, especially when you're the host, so that you don't inadvertently leave and shut the meeting down for everybody, kicking everybody out. Meeting duration could be really helpful for teaching. I have Zoom added to my menu bar just so I can see when it's uh, open. Uh, if you need a reminder before meetings, you can uh, tick this box. You can set the theme to be whatever you want, light or dark, which is nice. And you can do a little bit of like customization of the like emoji things that they have. Video preferences. This is like probably where most people are gonna wanna mess around the most. And I'll show you how you can go back and forth between things. At least on my camera, my recording, there's not really much difference between this widescreen and the original ratio. So if I go back and forth, it's just the tiniest little adjustment to my video. Um, I have HD enabled, so I have an HD FaceTime camera in my laptop, so I'm going to leave that on so the video quality is better for students. Mirror my video, this one's really like uh, kind of groundbreaking. So when I don't have it checked, like I can see myself and I, it's really distracting for me actually because this is not what I look like in a mirror. This is like the, I don't know the, what potentially what I look like to other people all the time, but I find it distracting because it's not the version of my face symmetry that I'm used to seeing. So mirroring your video shows you what you're used to seeing when you look in a mirror, uh, which is way more helpful, I think, to kind of like keeping you on track and not distracted by your own image if you're gonna like look at your video while you're lecturing. Touch up my appearance. So this is like the magic like face tune smoothing thing that I have been mentioning to different people for the last week or so. It's not magic, so it does it does make a difference. I have it on now, so it's smoothing out a lot of like, you know, hair that's not in the right place or like how my the skin on my face looks. It's not dramatic though. So if I unclick it, like it's a little less polished, a little less smooth looking, but it is not making a huge difference. It can start to feel a little bit like a lifesaver as you get potentially uh, more and more worn out over the course of a long quarter. And maybe you're having office hours and you don't really want to like, fully get dressed uh, and out of your pajamas to do that. Like you can look a little more put together if you uh, uh, enable this button. So it's always there by default to kind of like smooth everything out. These other options are uh, much more important. So display participant name on their videos, that would probably be a good idea to check for uh, class context. Turn off my video and join in a meeting. Probably not when you're the host, uh, but when you're entering somebody else's room for whatever reason, you could set this to be the default. Then you can always enable your video right in the meeting. I always show video preview when you're joining. So this will give you a little pop-up window so you can make sure like you don't, you know, have a giant pen mark across your face or something before you join a meeting or you start teaching. Hide non-video participants, that'll be helpful in a class setting too. So if a bunch of students have joined uh, via audio or they are in the meeting, but they don't have their video on, you can hide them so you don't see all those little boxes with people's names, but like no video showing up. And spotlight my video when speaking. This is similar to a feature that Annie and I talked about in a previous video where you can kind of pin some person's video so that it becomes kind of the default. So I think when you're speaking, your video would be highlighted for everybody so that they could pick you out of the field of different participant squares if need be. 
audio. Okay, you want to make sure you want to this is like the thing people struggle with the most when they're new to zoom is how do you get your audio going if you're in any kind of noisy environment, it's probably a good idea to wear headphones and test your audio before you're joining uh, your first uh, zoom lecture as a TA or as a student, or as the instructor, make sure everything works, make sure um, people can hear you uh, using your computer audio or whatever the setting is that you have. There are a variety of different options once you have something plugged in like headphones or potentially an external microphone. All these uh, drop down menus will have multiple options that you can choose from. So you just want to play around with that and make sure you have the things selected that are going to uh, provide the smooth smoothest experience for you and the students in your class. Um, you can set it to mute your microphone when joining a meeting. So this is a little bit different from you as the instructor muting all of your students as they're coming into a meeting. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, yeah, these are pretty straightforward. Screen sharing options. Uh, enter full screen when a participant shares their screen. You can uncheck that if you prefer not to just go into full screen. I think that's a matter of personal preference. Um, same with the second one, maximize the zoom window. I would recommend scale to fit shared content to the Zoom window. That's kind of nice. And then side-by-side -side mode is helpful um, because it will automatically take all the video thumbnails and put it next to the content. So again, if you're doing the approach that Annie and I showed before where you can pin somebody's video or have your students pin your video so it's always the default and it'll be side-by-side -side with your content, that's probably the best way to get like a lecture video next to presentation of your course materials. Okay, the chat options, uh, again, these are mostly, I would say entirely a matter of personal preference. So uh, anything that you might wanna change about the chat window that you can open um, and have uh, running with all of the people in your room, you can mess with this in there. I undid a lot of these things. So like, I don't want push notifications for all messages. So imagine you have lots and lots of students in your Zoom room for a big lecture. Anytime they're messaging like the whole class or just like the general chat board, like it's gonna pop up at the bottom of your screen, which might be distracting if you're trying to lecture. So maybe save it either for nothing or only ones that are directly at you. And then if like students are flagging questions for you, the instructor, whenever you're taking breaks, like every 10, maybe max 15 minutes of lecture, you wanna take a break to make sure that they have a minute to process everything that you've covered. Uh, you can kind of scan the chat window and see if there are questions that you could be answering in the break time too. Okay, virtual background. We talked about this a little bit in another video. Uh, my computer now, like my settings will let me uncheck this. I have a green screen because my processor is not powerful enough otherwise, but if I wanted to, just show you, uh, I don't have a green screen, but it picks out the white wall behind me as a green screen, so I can sort of do this. And if I sat in front of a completely blank wall, I could do this. I could just tell it like I have a solid color behind me and it would treat it like a green screen. So could do that. I'll, I don't find it necessarily helpful. It just seems distracting, especially when it's like half my real living room and then half a fancy chandelier thing from Vienna. So I don't uh, use it your own discretion. Recording options. This is going to be important as you make decisions about like how you're going to record the uh, presentation of the information that you're giving to your students. Like, do you want it recording your lectures onto your hard drive, the local recording option here? Do you want it going into the cloud recording? So Zoom will uh, do that for you. We've been experiencing some slowness in that, so it will do it, but it took Earlier this week, it took about 24 hours, maybe 36 hours before I had a usable recording from a five minute um, lecture from, not lecture, but like meeting uh, that I had recorded with a bunch of people in my Zoom room. So we're looking into other options to speed that up because obviously that's not very helpful if you're trying to give people synchronous lectures and then also making them available so they can watch them over and over. So you have two options here. If you have a lot of space on your hard drive, it might be faster to do it locally, but just keep keep an eye on how quickly it's gonna eat up space because these are gonna end up being pretty gigantic files. Okay, your profile, uh, I could go through my uh, multi-factor authentic authentication and show you the advanced features through the web page, but I don't need to do that right now. Statistics will just tell you how your computer is doing with uh, different demands of different programs. Feedback, if you wanted to like uh, suggest something, it's like a comment box. Keyboard shortcuts, if you are really savvy with this kind of thing and you want to 
uh, hotkey different options that you use all the time, you can do that. It's got preset ones here. And then accessibility issues. So Annie and I are still trying to figure out exactly how to request that Zoom add subtitles. So this is supposed to be something that Zoom is able to do in the recorded uh, meetings. And so it should auto caption, even though that'll be kind of wonky, it will auto caption everything that people have said throughout the lecture, throughout the class. So you can come in here and mess with this a little bit, but again, more information coming soon as we have it about that. Okay, that's everything about settings. Good luck.